what's going on everybody and today I'm gonna be bringing you a brand new video on 1.6 the PTS I basically just want to put this here real quickly this is not gonna be anything in depth I'm just gonna be showing off some of the talents some of the unique things on new weapons and gear sets so that people that aren't on the PTS can see what's going on I'll also show some of the nerfs slash buffs that they supposedly did so let's get right into it so first off we're going to be going through the named weapons and the exotics. So as you can see the color has changed to like an orangish color. That goes for gear pieces and weapons. Now as you can see right here, brutal and fierce on that Caduceus. And on the other one, deadly and unforgiving. On any named weapon, the first two talents will be randomly rolled. And the third talent will be its built-in talent. I'm going to go ahead and go through them in the video real quickly. I'm not going to really go over them because they are kind of in the PTS so they are being worked on. Some of the weapons have two-piece bonuses, such as the Valkyrie in the Air, which is getting changed. The Valkyrie in the Air are extremely OP. It's not the Seeker gear set, and I'm going to show you that towards the end of this video. I'm going to go ahead and go through all the named weapons so you can see all of their built-in talents. If you want to look over it even closer, you can pause the video. I'm just going to go ahead and let the video roll through them all real quickly, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Alright, so the very first weapon that we're going to be looking at is the Historian. Now, as you can see, the first shot does the decent damage. It's the second thing that surprises people. It will do an explosion that is 20% of your skill power. So the more skill power you have, the better that explosion is going to be. On this build right here, I only have about 92,000 skill power, so it's not helping me that much. However, if you have more skill power, this is going to still make it so that you can do a lot of damage. So a lot of you skill build players out there that don't build damage, per se, the DPS style, you will still be able to do damage using your skill power with the Historian because that explosion is going to do a lot of damage. The next gun that we'll be looking at real quickly is what I'm going to be using for this next part of this mission real quick. It is going to be the Medved. Now the Medved had a recent change on his third talent, which by the way, as of right now, you cannot roll any of the third talents on any of the named weapons. I don't know if this is just a PTS thing, or if this is going to be implemented into the full game. So what's really cool about the Medved is its third talent is called Center Mass. What it does is it shoots a slug, so as you can see when I'm shooting these AI, it actually shoots one giant bullet. Now if you know shotguns at all, you'll know that we're used to buckshots in this game, where it shoots about eight pellets at a time. The medved takes us to a slug, which is one giant bullet, but it does a lot of damage. Now what this does really cool is that as you can see, I'm running sentry on this build. Now with it having only one bullet at a time instead of a pellet, you can actually somewhat snipe with the medved so since the medved now only has one bullet one projectile instead of eight pellets striker is not going to be very good with the medved as it was before you would use the eight pellets to stack striker and switch to the other weapon it's not going to do the same because this is only one pellet or one bullet at a time known as the slug now what's really cool about this is like i said you can somewhat snipe with the medved but you can also mark people still, and it will do a lot more damage than if you were to only shoot the eight pellets. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next part of this mission here in just a minute, and I will show off two other weapons. Now the next two weapons that we're gonna be looking at are the Cassidy and the Caduceus. Now all of us have heard about the Caduceus, so I'm gonna go over the Cassidy first. The Cassidy's third talent is called Boomstick. What it allows you to do is any double trigger pull allows you to fire both barrels in quick succession. So as you can see in the video right here, it's firing both barrels at the exact same time or in short succession. Now I don't know if this is intended or not, I was only clicking one time and it was firing both. Now what I think is supposed to happen, if you hold both triggers or you click both buttons, the aim and the fire button, it fires both barrels. But I don't think it's working as intended. Now moving on to the Caduceus, every critical hit is going to heal you and your nearby teammates for 1%. Now I don't have the greatest way of showing this, just because 1% is not that much at all, 
but I tried to show it here at this next part. You'll be able to see it hopefully a little bit. I let them hit me some so you can hopefully see it. But as you can see, I am healing for a very small amount. Now you can also see my character glows green, as it does with health on kill or self preserve, showing you that it is giving me the heal. 1% is not that much in my opinion, it's actually less than self preserve, and the fact that it heals your whole team does not make up for the fact that it's only such a low percentage in my opinion. In my opinion, if they want the Caduceus to have been viable, it should have been every crit hit heals you and your nearby teammates for 5% of the damage dealt instead of just 1%. If you hit for 100 damage, 1% is only going to heal your teammates for 1. 1 health point. Now that would be great if we all had 100 health points, but we have nearly in the 300, sometimes a, maybe a more in the 200,000 range, so 1% is not going to do that much at all. I do think it ought to be changed. Now I was going to show you guys the FAMAS, but we all know the FAMAS' third talent is still uncomplicated. It still gives you the extra base damage unless you use accuracy or stability mods, so there was no point in me showing that. The Liberator and the Centurion, I believe, are a little messed up right now. So what I did decide to do was show off the Damascus real quickly. As you can see right here, it increases the base damage when you draw it for two seconds. It's known as Quick Draw. So every time you pull it up, you're going to see the little notification underneath your health bar that shows you that you have it. Now it only lasts for two seconds, which is not very long in my opinion at all. As you can see, all I did was pull up the interface and it's already gone. Now you can see right here, I actually switched to it real quickly so you can see the actual base damage that it does increase, and it increases on my build about 3,000, which is pretty cool, but it's a pistol, so not that cool after all. Moving on to the Golden Rhino, now the Golden Rhino was kind of weird for me to look at, because the Golden Rhino made it so that it still staggers, but you only have one talent and that's it, and as of right now, you can't re-roll it. So the next weapon that I was going to look at was the Midas. The Midas did not work very well though for PvE. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the Hungry Hog. It has the third talent as Glutton. Now Glutton increases the base damage by 20% for every kill you get as long as you keep firing. So if you get 2 kills, it's 40%. 3 kills, 60%. And it keeps stacking and stacking for every kill. But as soon as you stop firing, which you'll see here in just a minute, the stacks go away instantly as soon as you stop firing. So it is really cool. The only bad part is that you have to constantly fire, which means that you need to have meticulous on the Hungry Hog for it to be worth it. Now one thing I do want to explain real quickly is Alpha Bridge. Now Alpha Bridge did receive a change, so if you use a named weapon or an exotic, you will get a fourth talent. It will be the bottom talent on the other weapon as long as it is not an exotic. You will not get six talents, you will only get the bottom one on the other weapon as long as it's not an exotic. Now if you use the regular weapon and the exotic as your secondary, you will not get the exotic's third talent onto the normal weapon. It only works as if you use the exotic weapon as the first one. The next weapon that we're going to be talking about is the pecan. Now the pecan's talent allows you to have a bigger magazine per kill. So as you can see right here, I have 45 rounds in the magazine. I'm going to get ahead and get a couple of kills and then get a reload in and you will see how many rounds I have after the reload. So I get two, I'm about to get a third, so this is three kills that I'm going to get, which added a lot of rounds. So now instead of 45, I have 72 bullets. Now one thing to keep in mind, once you have more bullets than what you were supposed to have in the magazine, I I don't know if this is intended or not, you cannot reload with the extra bullets. You have to get down to your regular mag size, which is 45, or below in order to reload. The next weapon I'll be using is the Tenebre. Tenebre has lights out. For every weak spot destroyed, reduces your cooldowns. So as you can see, I pop my heal and my pulse, and they're already back up because I've already destroyed one thing. Now the Tenebre allows you to get your skills and your teammate's skills back a lot faster. 
The next weapon I'll be using is the Tommy Gun, which is the same as the Thompson. They both have Carefree, which increases damage by 11% when hip firing. Carefree is already in the game, so it's not really anything new. Now I did notice that a lot of people haven't really shown this off, so I did want to go ahead and show it off. Rogue activities and normal rewards in the DZ. So as you can see here, I'm just going to breeze through them really quickly. You can check world leaderboards, friends leaderboards, you can check everything that you want, all right here inside of checkpoints. So I just wanted to show you that real quickly, and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next couple of weapons for this first part of my thoughts on PTS. Alright, so moving on to the last part of this two-part series. This is going to conclude the first part of the series on my thoughts on PTS for this week. Right here, I'm going to show you the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie and the air are completely bugged right now. The air allows you to 100% crit. My air was at 112% crit chance with whatever crit damage I had stacked up with the Valkyrie. The problem is that the Valkyrie has no limit on it right now, allowing you to build up your crit damage up to 9,999 at max stats. Now, a lot of people are getting this confused with Seeker. That is not the case. Seeker, the only reason your DPS is higher with the Seeker gear set is because it is a guaranteed crit chance, which that is getting changed. I'm not going to go into detail on this video, but I will say Seeker is getting a change, so don't get used to it. But you can do it with any gear set. It does not have to be Seeker. I just want to make that clear. It is just the weapons. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and show you what happens when you build it with a different gear set. I'm using Striker. I'm going to show you what can happen when you build it with Striker and the Valkyrie. So I'll go ahead and let the video end with that. And as you can see, I can get my DPS up to over 7 million. I was actually killing the target dummies in the base later with only about 5 bullets. So I couldn't even get it up higher, but I was almost able to hit 8 million DPS, which is ridiculous. As soon as these get changed, I will be able to test a lot more in the DZ as far as PvP goes, but right now PvP in the PTS is a little broken because of these two weapons. So have a good one everybody, and I will see you guys next time on part 2 of the PTS video series. Have a good one. I can't hear you.